human beings will ever be able to become immortal? Oh, yeah, that, that's a tough question. Here's the honest answer. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> never. In a thousand years, 10,000 years, never. Well, never is, is a pretty hard statement. I would say that with the technology that, that I can envisage, even the best technology, give it a thousand years of development, I think we can live many hundreds of years. Really? Well, well let's get into that later. I, I think we've, we've got some new technology coming out of the aging field that that makes the old stuff, even things just two years ago, look primitive. But immortality is so hard. I mean, we're fighting entropy. We're fighting the second law of thermodynamics, which is a very powerful law of nature. And really what, what we've discovered in my lab and some others around the world is that it's hard to preserve adult living things for a long, long time. You can keep them together and functioning for longer. We've got some species on the planet, particularly plants that can live thousands of years and many hundreds of years for some mammals, bowhead whale, for example. But going, you know, imm immortality, you're, you're fighting what turns out to be a loss of information. Um, you know, we all understand the importance of information. Our computers get corrupted. Our, uh, we, you know, we used to have things like compact discs and DVDs that got scratched. These are examples of, of mm. the problems with trying to store information forever. You know, how, how long would an iPhone last? It's not going to last for a thousand years, that's for sure. But if the information's in the cloud, then it can't be scratched. Maybe yeah. digitally scratched, but... Well, that that's the saving grace. Maybe if we are able to upload ourselves somehow or rebuild ourselves from scratch, that's immortality. That's beyond anything that I'm seeing right now. Um, I think a lot of people who say, oh, let's just download our brains into the internet are underestimating the complexity of the human brain. It's not like just wires contacting each other. Every one of those wires is extremely complex, com more complex than anything in the known universe. Uh, and so you put a, a few trillion of those together into one thing and it's very hard to map it without damaging it um, and let alone rebuild it. So um, the, br the brain wiring is more complex than anything in the universe. Our brains are the most complex uh, thing in the universe. Do you think it's more complex than, than the understanding of God or source or the creator? I, I think that's pretty simple. You believe it or you don't. We've inherited brains from our ancestors mm. that have consciousness and then we're able to ask these questions. Where do we come from? Is there a force beyond what we understand that gave rise to everything around us? Or are we just an accident of nature? In your opinion, what do you think is an ideal lifespan for humans then with the technology we have today and the technology we're going to have over the next two decades? What do you think is the ideal lifespan where we'll be functioning, healthy human beings that have memory and not just blobs that just last longer? Yeah, you, you, that's a really good question. And I, I don't recall ever having been asked that one. Right now, the maximum human lifespan uh, that's recorded at least and even that is debatable, is 122 mm. years old for the French woman, Jean Calment. The thing about living that long uh, is that, and we often forget, is that that means she was still very active. I'm sure she was you know, riding her bicycle around uh, her village when she was 105. Wow. So if you live that long, you have this period of, of health where you don't have diseases. Aging brings on those diseases. And so when you think about extending lifespan, the important thing is to realize that you don't live longer in old age, you live longer in a, in a youthful state. What do you mean by that? Well, we, we do have technology in, in animals, let's say mice, to make them live 20% longer. They don't live 20% longer at the end of life. They actually live 20% longer uh, in midlife so that they don't get diseases. They stay younger, longer, earlier. Right, so that you can compare these animals. You can actually do this pretty easily. Actually, anybody could do it. You take a, a mouse and, and another mouse and you give a lot less food to one of them or feed them every other day. Uh, and yeah, they'll, they'll be hungry. I think they eventually can get used to it. Uh, but what happens is you can compare those two mice or you know, 50 mice in one group and 50 in the other. This is what has been done for now 80 years. And the ones that have spent some time in hunger uh, or not always satisfied, they are remarkably different. 
Their coats look all shiny. They have very little cancer or evidence of cancer. They're running around the cage. And the mice that have been eating as much as they ever wanted, which is kind of how we live now, um, most people, uh, they are decrepit. They are you know, not moving. They've lost a lot of their ability to remember things. They don't bother making a nest. It's, it's dramatic. And this has been done for monkeys as well. It's been done for Labrador dogs. It's a really universal thing in life. So to, to get to your question, Lewis, actually, what's the optimal life if you had the chance to stay young? Uh, why would you want to die? I don't think anybody who's healthy and has friends and is enjoying their life says, I want to die tomorrow. I haven't ever met anybody like that. You know, there, there, there's, there's pain, there's suffering, there's depression. But if you don't have those, why would you want to die? I mean, maybe boredom, but you know, there are ways of... <laughs> right, you'd always want to live. You'd always, if you had a purpose, if you had community, if you were pain-free, you'd want to keep living, I would assume. If you were enjoying your life and you had love and connection and mission, then you'd want to live as long as you could. 